Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. Today we've got something that's really unusual and it's not something that you commonly get a chance to tear apart and that is a reverse osmosis membrane. So this particular membrane is big. You can see it's on the, the big teardown bench here. It's about three feet long and it's from a car wash. Uh, car washes commonly use reverse osmosis for their spot-free rinse and these systems have to be pretty big. So there's a, a sealed cartridge, like a tube, a large outer diameter tube, and this would slide into it. And you can see the seals on the ends here. So this would slide into that tube and then our fittings are on the ends of that tube. So this particular one you can see it's pretty long, but there's not much to it from the outside. But when we look at the rating sheet for it, instead of being rated in gallons per minute, it's rated in gallons per day. And to give you an idea of the size of this cartridge, this one is rated for 2,500 gallons per day. So this particular one, you can see the design has a, a tube that goes down through the center, and that, that tube goes all the way down through and then I believe the water would come out through the outside here. But these filters back flush. They have water moving in both directions at different parts in the RO cycle. So we can see a lot of debris has gotten stuck. Looks like it was partially backwashed with some debris in the system. So with an application like a car wash, this membrane cartridge feeds its output into a holding tank. And then the holding tank has a repressurization pump, and when there's a call for spot-free rinse, that pump kicks on. So these really only run until that tank is full, and then it sits and idles until the tank level drops low enough to trip, trip the RO back on. So I think to get this apart, getting this apart might be a trick, but I think to get it apart, what I'm going to try and do is cut the ends off first. And then maybe just split and clamshell the whole case. But we'll see if we can slide that out once we get the end caps cut off. the outer shell opened up here. And it looks like we've got tape and some kind of spiral wrapping around the outside here. These membranes do wear out over time. They can become damaged by chemicals like chlorine, or they can be damaged just by the, the material in the water. So they do have to be periodically replaced. See, it's just it's wrapped around this kind of central core. And there's like a layer of mesh and then a layer of membrane so that water can permeate and can flow through. So let's see if we can cut that off of the main tube. 
All right. So it's kind of, it was kind of hard for you to see what was going on here. But what they've done is they've wrapped this material around this central inlet tube so that as the water is forced in, it, it has somewhere to go. So they have this kind of mesh material in there. Let's that water enter into the membrane, it looks like. And then as it flows through it, let's get one piece of membrane here. I'll just get one layer. You can see the debris that has got caught in it. But viewed from the edge, you can see they've given the water a path into the membrane. And then they use this mesh material to give the water a path back out of the membrane. Now I know it's kind of hard to tell from the video, but this membrane material, it, it, it's very papery. It cuts about like paper, and it, it feels, feels almost like a laminated piece of paper. It's very slippery. Yeah, you can see the, the layering of that kind of substrate material into the actual membrane. It's kind of neat the way it's all put together. But if I just rolled this up and left it sit on a desk, you'd, you'd almost think it was an old architectural drawing or something. It's, it's just very, very papery. So, Principles of operation on an RO system. You're basically using this membrane like your filter. And the membrane is porous, but it's porous at a, a microscopic level. You can't see the pores in it. So the water is pushed into it under pressure. And as that water passes through the membrane, everything that's not water gets left behind. So this membrane is the critical part of the system. Larger systems, like the system this came out of, have several pumps. So there's a pump to push the water in to the membrane system, and there's a pump to repressurize it from the holding tank after it's been run through the membrane. Uh, RO systems are, are a very powerful tool in our filtering arsenal, but they're not a one-size-fits-all solution. So one of the ways that you can kill this membrane, that you can make this system fail, is by pushing chlorinated water through it. And that chlorine will attack the membrane material and cause it to fail. So you still have to deal with other treatment systems, even if you have RO. So you'd have to have some kind of thing on the inlet, either a um, carbon filter or a chloramine filter to help manage that. But it ends up being pretty interesting. Uh, other ways it can fail, just bad water quality. You're going to push in all this debris and eventually the membrane just can't take any more. Larger systems have some kind of backflow or flush. Very, very small systems will have a, a just like kind of a bleed or a bypass. But this particular system that this came out of had a pressurized back flush that would purge out all the debris. And that's how I think we ended up with all of this garbage in the, the bottom of the membrane cartridge. But overall, pretty interesting. Something you don't get to see every day, at least. I think that'll do it for now. Thanks for watching. Hi, folks. My name is Jack Kell, and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a smart care technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com. Dot com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.